That evening, when he got back from work, Uncle Vernon did something he'd never done before. He visited Harry in his cupboard. "'Where's my letter?' said Harry, the moment Uncle Vernon had squeezed through the door. "'Who's writing to me?' "'No one. It was addressed to you by mistake,' said Uncle Vernon shortly. "'I have burned it.' "'It was not a mistake,' said Harry angrily. "'It had my cupboard on it.' "'Silence!' yelled Uncle Vernon, and a couple of spiders fell from the ceiling. He took a few deep breaths, and then forced his face into a smile, which looked quite painful. Uh, yes, Harry, about this cupboard, your aunt and I have been thinking. You're really getting a bit big for it. We think it might be nice if you moved into Dudley's second bedroom. Why? said Harry. Don't ask questions, snapped his uncle. Take this stuff upstairs, now. The Dursley's house had four bedrooms, one for Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia, one for visitors, usually Uncle Vernon's sister, Marge, one where Dudley slept, and one where Dudley kept all the toys and things that wouldn't fit into his first bedroom. It only took Harry one trip upstairs to move everything he owned from the cupboard to this room. He sat on the bed and stared around him. Nearly everything in here was broken. The month-old sign camera was lying on top of a small working tank Dudley had once driven over next door's dog. In the corner was Dudley's first ever television set, which he'd put his foot through when his favourite programme had been cancelled. There was a large bird cage, which had once held a parrot that Dudley had swapped at school for a real air rifle, which was up on a shelf with the end all bent because Dudley had sat on it. Other shelves were full of books. They were the only things in the room that looked as though they'd never been touched. From downstairs came the sound of Dudley bawling at his mother. I don't want him there. I need that room. Make him get out. Harry sighed and stretched out on the bed. Yesterday he'd have given anything to be up here. Today, he'd rather be back in his cupboard with that letter than up here without it. Next morning at breakfast, everyone was rather quiet. Dudley was in shock. He screamed, whacked his father with his smelting stick, been sick on purpose, kicked his mother and thrown his tortoise through the greenhouse roof and he still didn't have his room back. Harry was thinking about this time yesterday and bitterly wishing he'd opened the letter in the hall. Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia kept looking at each other darkly. When the post arrived, Uncle Vernon, who seemed to be trying to be nice to Harry, made Dudley go and get it. They heard him banging things with his smarting stick all the way down the hall. Then he shouted, There's another one, Mr. H. Potter, the smallest bedroom, four privet drive. With a strangled cry, Uncle Vernon leapt from his seat and ran down the hall, Harry right behind him. Uncle Vernon had to wrestle Dudley to the ground to get the letter from him which was made difficult by the fact that Harry had grabbed Uncle Vernon around the neck from behind. After a minute of confused fighting, in which everyone got hit a lot by the smelting stick, Uncle Vernon straightened up, gasping for breath, with Harry's letter clutched in his hand. "'Go to your cupboard, I mean your bedroom,' he wheezed at Harry. "'Dudley, go!' Just go. 
Harry walked round and round his new room. Someone knew he had moved out of his cupboard, and they seemed to know he hadn't received his first letter. Surely that meant they'd try again, and this time he'd make sure they didn't fail. He had a plan. The repaired alarm clock rang at six o'clock the next morning. Harry turned it off quickly and dressed silently. He mustn't wake the Dursleys. He stole downstairs without turning on any of the lights. He was going to wait for the postman on the corner of Privet Drive and get the letters for number four first. His heart hammered as he crept across the dark hall towards the front door. Ah! Harry leapt into the air. He'd trodden on something big and squashy on the doormat. Something alive. Lights clicked on upstairs, and to his horror, Harry realised that the big squashy something had been his uncle's face. Uncle Vernon had been lying at the foot of the front door in a sleeping bag, clearly making sure that Harry didn't do exactly what he'd been trying to do. He shouted at Harry for about half an hour and then told him to go and make a cup of tea. Harry shuffled miserably off into the kitchen and by the time he got back, the post had arrived right into Uncle Vernon's lap. Harry could see three letters addressed in green ink. I want, he began, but Uncle Vernon was tearing the letters into pieces before his eyes. Uncle Vernon didn't go to work that day. He stayed at home and nailed up the letterbox. See, he explained to Aunt Petunia, through a mouthful of nails. If they can't deliver them, they'll just give up. I'm not sure that'll work, Vernon. Oh, these people's minds work in strange ways, Petunia. They're not like you and me, said Uncle Vernon, trying to knock in a nail with the piece of fruit cake Aunt Petunia had just brought him. On Friday, no fewer than twelve letters arrived for Harry. As they couldn't go through the letterbox, they had been pushed under the door, slotted through the sides, and a few even forced through the small window in the downstairs toilet. Uncle Vernon stayed at home again. After burning all the letters, he got out a hammer and nails and boarded up the cracks around the front and back doors so no one could go out. He hummed tiptoe through the tulips as he worked and jumped at small noises. On Saturday, things began to get out of hand. Twenty-four letters to Harry found their way into the house, rolled up and hidden inside each of the two dozen eggs that their very confused milkman had handed Aunt Petunia through the living room window. While Uncle Vernon made furious telephone calls to the post office and the dairy trying to find someone to complain to, Aunt Petunia shredded the letters in her food mixer. Who on earth wants to talk to you this badly? Dudley asked Harry in amazement. On Sunday morning, Uncle Vernon sat down at the breakfast table, looking tired and rather ill, but happy. No post on Sundays. He reminded them happily as he spread marmalade on his newspapers. No damn letters today. Something came whizzing down the kitchen chimney as he spoke and caught him sharply on the back of the head. Next moment, thirty or forty letters came pelting out of the fireplace like bullets. The Dursleys ducked, but Harry leapt into the air, 
trying to catch one. Out! Out! Uncle Vernon seized Harry around the waist and threw him into the hall. When Aunt Petunia and Dudley had run out with their arms over their faces, Uncle Vernon slammed the door shut. They could hear the letters still streaming into the room, bouncing off the walls and floor. That does it, said Uncle Vernon, trying to speak calmly but pulling great tufts out of his moustache at the same time. I want you all back here in five minutes, ready to leave. We're going away. Just pack some clothes, no arguments. He looked so dangerous with half his moustache missing, and no one dared argue. Ten minutes later, they had wrenched their way through the boarded-up doors and were in the car, speeding towards the motorway.